Hello, and my name is Lowell Vanderpool, and this channel is dedicated to IT professionals, IT students, and anyone who's interested in technical subjects. Today I'd like to show you a group of customizable utilities for Windows users called Microsoft Power Toys. This suite of tools allows users to fine-tune their Windows 10 experience and maximize productivity, from creating custom layouts for your desktop to a simple way to resize images. Now Power Toys has been around in several incarnations over the years, starting with Windows 95 and XP, but it was discontinued with the introduction of Windows Vista. It was eventually reintroduced four years after the release of Windows 10, and since about mid-2019, it's become an open source project, and it's now available to download on GitHub. The utility currently supports 64-bit architecture, but an x86 and an ARM version are currently in development. The current installation requirements are for Windows 10 version 18.03 or later, and it requires that .NET Core 3.1 desktop runtime is installed, and they include that within the installer. The installation process is easy. Just head over to the GitHub page for the latest version, click on the executable to download, and follow the prompts to install. Once completed, you can see the icon will be running in the system tray. Now our installation of PowerToys is complete. You can see that it's currently set to run as an administrator. You can change the mode uh, and appearance of how the utility is set to look. I have it set to run at startup, and it also has a built-in update checker so you can make sure that you're on the latest version. The first utility that we'll take a look at from the Power Toy suite is called the Color Picker. This utility allows us to select any color system-wide from any running application and copy the color format. If you're a visual creative, you can use this tool to save that perfect shade of color and reuse it in your next project. So here I am in the Color Picker main menu settings of the Power Toys and it's currently set to use the Windows key, Shift and C to activate. So let's take a look at what that looks like. If I activate it, we can see on my mouse cursor now, it's highlighting and it's picking out those color formats of these different colors in my background image. So if I wanted to capture this nice pretty shade of purple, if I click on that color and then open up a notepad, I can paste this in and it's going to give me the RGB color value for that purple shade. If you go into any type of color editor that allows you to enter in this type of RGB format in, you can be able to reproduce that exact shade of color again. If you're a visual creative user, this can be a great tool to have in your toolbox. Next up is a utility called Fancy Zones. Fancy Zones lets you define your application windows with pre-made templates or you can design your own. Easily move and snap important applications anywhere you'd like to take complete control of your desktop. Here I am in the Fancy Zones main settings page and it's set to use the Windows key and Y to launch the editor so let's enable that. Here we've got uh, templates that are available to choose from. Uh, there's column mode, there's a rows or a grid. In each one of these, if you click into the edit button, you can add additional zones or you can remove zones based on what you would like. You can also create custom layouts. So here I've got a, a custom layout that I'd created. And if I hit the edit button, I can go in and edit the zones that are available. It has three zones currently configured. Those can be moved and shifted wherever you'd like, and you can resize those as well. So it's a good way to be able to put priority applications exactly where you'd like it on your desktop and take ownership of your real estate. So if I save and apply that and then exit from the utility, I can activate our new windows by clicking the top and dragging while holding the shift key. And you can see it's highlighting those templates in the background. If I release, it then snaps into place. I can grab another application, hold shift, and bring that into the other template that I've created. So you can go in and, and exactly configure your desktop how you'd like. If you have high priority applications that you want up and visible, this is a great way to do that quickly and easily. 
Our next tool is called File Explorer, and it enables a preview pane view for .sgv and .sgv thumbnails in addition to markdown files. So I have a folder set up with a couple of different file types configured. We have a Word uh, document, we've got a, a JPEG image, and a PDF file. So if I go up into the view of this File Explorer window and enable the preview pane, over on our right hand side now you can see we've got that same thumbnail image as shown in the preview pane window. If I click on our Word document, I actually have the ability to scroll in and be able to see exactly what is within that document. Same with our PDF, it gives that visual view of, of what's in the file. And this could be really useful if you're trying to find that document and, and maybe you just need that visual indicator for reference to, okay, this is exactly what I was looking for. So it can be a very helpful utility in that regard. Moving along, we'll take a look at the image resizer utility next, and this works exactly like it sounds. It comes with four built-in presets for image sizes from a small through large and also one configured for phone sizes, and you can add additional templates as needed. If we go back to our demo folder, I have that picture with the laptop. If we right-click that image, one of our new contextual options is to resize the picture. So I'm going to click on resize, and I want to make it smaller in this case. So I've got small configured for that and I'm going to click resize. You'll see we've got a duplicate image has now been created here and it's got our small highlighted. If we look at our image details, you can see the dimension sizes of the first image are significantly larger. Click on here, here's our small image and then there was our larger image that we had initially converted from. The utility allows you to adjust image sizes on the fly and easily convert them which can be very handy. The next tool is called Power Rename, and it allows you to modify file names, include search and replace functions, and can perform a regular expression rename on multiple files. Now we're back in the demo folder, and I've got a situation where I have multiple file types that have been copied and pasted back into this folder, and now I've got copies of copies listed. So with the Power Rename, I can go in and, and clean that up a bit. If I select Control A, and right click in our context menu now there's an option for power rename. I'll select this option and it has all of our files selected that were available in that folder. I can search for copy, I just want to get rid of that and, and re don't replace it with anything and click rename and now it's gone in and done a bulk rename of all of those files, remove that copy and I just have the number indicators here. If I right click back into this folder, in my context menu I have that undo option to where if I wanted to revert that change, I can go in there and change that and now we're back to where we were before. One of the easiest to use utilities in this suite is the Power Toys Run. It's a quick launch search utility that you can launch with just the button press combination and it's got a lot of additional capabilities built into it without really sacrificing performance. So if I enable it with the alt space key press here, it brings up my little search menu and if I click in and search for a command prompt for example, you can see it highlights our application there and there's a couple contextual options. I can run that as an administrator by clicking here. I can open the folder where this executable is contained, which could be useful for other types of programs perhaps, and it also can open up directly uh, a path directly in console mode from just this search option. It makes it easy to have that quick launch search capability available just from that button press, so this is a fun one to have. Our last two utilities in the Power Toy suite are the Shortcut Guide and the Keyboard Manager. Now the Shortcut Guide is an overlay that when you hold down the Windows key for a set duration, it will pop up an overlay on the application that you're using, and it'll show you the shortcut configurations for that particular application, which can be very handy. The Keyboard Manager allows you to go in and do remapping of keys and of pre-existing keyboard shortcuts in the keyboard manager. So it has the ability to replace those preset keyboard functions and really configure your keyboard and your keyboard shortcuts exactly how you would like. I hope you enjoyed this overview of Microsoft Power Tools. So check them out and see if they work for you. Until next time, my name is Nathan with Tech Savvy Productions.